My DP peeps, it's Josh here with Deprived Productions back in Unreal Engine 4 with a 14th blueprinting tutorial, and we're going to talk about saving and loading our game today. Except we're just going to save and load a couple variables, you know what I'm talking about. We're going to take our location, the character location, set it to a variable, and save and load that. But we're also going to create a variable called distance traveled. We'll name it distance traveled, and as we move, it's going to accumulate. And what we're going to do is we're going to save and load that variable too, because we do what we want. You know what I'm talking about. So let's escape an F11 and let's jump in. Now, the first things first is you have to find your third person or first person or player character that you're using. Now, if you don't know how to do that because you're using a starter project, just make sure you open up the world settings or find the world settings over here. Okay. And you can find it right here. Now, I know that mine is literally here, here, and then boom, this guy that I'm opening up right now, even though this window's jacked up for whatever reason, this guy and his coding is the guy that's running around here that I'm actually controlling. So we're going to start with that. Now, here's what we're going to need. Before we do anything, we're going to change two variables, right? So we're going to need to create those two variables. So first, let's create a variable, and let's make it yellow, because yellow means it's going to be a vector, a.k.a. location, a.k.a. collar, a.k.a. whatever, and we're going to name it character location. All right. Now, let's make another one, okay? Except it's just going to be a number, a single number, a whole number, an integer, if you will, if I may, do I dare? We're going to name that bad baby Distance travel. All right. <clears throat> That's it. So we got our two variables. Now, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and create our save game blueprint. Okay, so we're, we're going to need that because we literally just need to take these two variables and make sure they're saved to a save game blueprint. Okay, so check it out. Let's go. And we're going to stay in here. We're not even going to go in the DP folder today. Okay, we right here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to click on blueprint class. And usually this is, uh, this is collapsed for you, but it may not be. You got your options up here. Well, instead, go down here. And let's type in the word save game. Yeah, that baby right there. We're gonna select it. I'm going to name it GS. You know what I'm talking about? Keep it simple for game save. We're we'll just keep it simple so I know the name of it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to go here. I'm going to see these two variables I created. And that's all I'm going to do is create these. So let, let's go into GS. It is a blank blueprint. We're not going to do anything inside here. Literally just store the variables information. So let's go to the variable and let's create a, a, a yeller. Okay. Let's get a little yeller with it because it's a spot. We got a little, little, little spot and we're going to name it character location, but saved in big old capital letters afterwards. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> let, let, let them know. Okay. Let them know for somebody working on your stuff. Let's add another variable. It's going to be a whole number. It's going to be an integer. Do I dare if I might? And we're going to double click on it and we're going to name it Distance traveled, but with a saved at the end of it. Yeah, and I might, and I might have not spelled it right, okay? Uh, yeah, I might not have I've spelled it right, okay? But anyway, so the point is we're going to go ahead and close this GS, bro, because that's the name of our blueprint, and that's it. So let's just jump back in here, and let's get everything started moving. We got our variables created. We got our save variables created, and now we can actually start making it work. But we need to actually code in this distance traveled thing. Let me show you how I'm going to do it. We're going to keep it simple. I'm going to do that event tick because we know we like that because it's real fast, and I like, I like getting fast with it. Now, what we're going to need is we need the velocity of our character. So we can actually go to the character movement component, which is right here, and it's got all kinds of stuff. We can check the velocity and the max walk speed. We just grab this bad baby right here, okay? And let's 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 drag a line from that and get the velocity. I mean, literally, just 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 type in get velocity. Just type it in like that. What do you what do you want? Okay. But the thing is, it's a vector, and we just want an integer or at least a single number, a whole number, a float, if you will. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag drag a little line off that, and I want you to type in the word length. Okay. We're gonna see vector length, and boom, that is what we want. Okay. Now go up here. Just don't 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 connect this to it just yet, and type in the word branch. Okay. Because what we're doing is a branch. We need a condition. So this event tick is constantly firing, and it's checking to see if our velocity's length, which is basically how fast we're moving in a certain direction, is greater than or equal to a certain number. So literally, we just need to grab here and find shift greater than. You see that bad baby right there? And boom, you got it. Yet greater than or greater than or equal to, we click this one. We'll make sure it's over 200. As long as it is over 200, that's what we're saying here. That, that condition, the character movement velocity length has to be over 200 for this to even happen. What do we want to do? Well, for now, we're just going to print a string. Now, we've probably talked about this a couple times, but all that all a couple times, but all this means is it's basically it's a debugging technique. It's basically telling us the code is working. So basically, check it out. Event tick. Check the velocity. If it's over 200, say hello to us. Say, oh, hey. So if I'm moving, nothing's happening. Nothing. nothing. Now you see a bunch of yellow. Or That's not yellow at all. My God. My God. It's blue, but, 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 oh, hey, all kind of hellos, because, I mean, you know, that's what's, what's happening here, but if I stop moving, you'll be able to tell that it's no longer doing it, 
That's exactly what we want. It's perfect. We literally want it to just basically tell us that it's working. It's only debugging. That's not what I'm going to do, though. But since we don't want to plug in a bunch of UMG and a bunch of HUD work, we are just going to take our value and plug it into the print string. Let me explain. What we actually want is this distance traveled. Let's set it. We want it to go up if we're moving. So check it out. Let's get distance traveled because that isn't redundant. Let's drag a line from it. Shift and the plus key, and you can get the integer plus integer. Let's just add one to it and plug that in, and then plug this in here. So instead of printing hello, print this value. That's it. We're just going to use the print string to see the distance that we've traveled. So now if I move, all kind of numbers be popping up, bro. You can't be afraid of it. You kind of just, you got to just love it. You got to just stop right on 373, which was not what I planned. But if I stop, it stops. If I go, it goes. You know what I'm saying? Now, the, I would obviously be a lot more precise with this if we were toying with it. But we, we got a number. We got a number. But here's the thing. If I press escape and I press alt P again, what's it at now? It started over. And that's fine, you know, because we're exiting the editor. And that's the thing. We want to be able to save it. Okay? We want to be able to go jump back into it and it keep going. So let me explain a couple things that we have to do. Let's F11, Alt P, and jump in here and set up the save and load game. But there's one thing I want you to understand beforehand. When you press escape, when you're inside the game like this and you press escape, you are not drawing any code. You are exiting the editor's game viewport. You are literally doing that. So if you really want to do this correctly, if you want to be able to quit your game and it save your progress, like we're going to set it up, you have to have a coded in quit game. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Even though that's not what we're going to do, I'm going to show you how it's possible. Now let's jump back in here and let's get it done. We need two buttons. We're going to set up two buttons and the first one's going to be the Z key. I'm going to type in Z key and you get the little Z button right there, bro. Okay. And I'm going to hold, I'm just right clicking X. You see the X button. Okay. So we'll do, uh, we'll make it simple here. We'll make Z the reason, the, the, the save. You know what I'm talking about? Make Z save. So if we're going to make Z save, if I press Z, I want it to save the game. So what we need is create save game object. Now what's cool about that is it's going to ask us for a save game object blueprint. And we created one called GS, bro, for game save because we ain't afraid. Okay? And I've got it right here. So what we want to do is we take the value of it. Here's those two variables. They're right in here. We got them right here. But let's do one thing. Let's right click and promote it to a variable. Okay, so now it's inside of the character. That's just really good technique, man, because now we can drag that bad baby anywhere and we ain't got to keep doing this. We just, boom, we got it. We can call it anywhere. And we'll just name it Save Game. Save game, baby. That's what we got. We got it right there. And what we want to do is a couple things. Now we can drag these variables out of it. So what we want to do is we want to get our two variables and save them in here. So let's get it done. Check it out. Let's get Let's do this. Get up here, type in get actor location, and you'll see it right here. And what we're doing is we're going to set our variable, the one we've created that we haven't used yet, that we haven't used yet, we're using it. Now we're basically saying if we press Z, let's create our variable, which is our, our location here, and let's set that to the saved one. So if I go drag out of this and type in set character location saved, we'll drag this yellow line into that. Boom. So we grabbed this location. We had to create it first, but we grabbed our location, essentially, and saved it there. And we're going to do the same thing here. Get distance traveled. We got it right here. But we want to set it. We want to set it to type in set distance traveled saved out of the saved save game object. Did you understand what I just did? Does that make sense? I want to make sure everybody understood what's going on there. You press Z, grab and create or create the save game object and save it. Now this is it. It's gone. Don't even worry about that. This is it now, and we can call it anywhere we want. You know what I'm talking about? Boom, we got them. There's our this is our variables. This is the GS that we created right here. Okay. Now, what we do is since we have those two variables inside, we get our oops, let's delete that. We get our character location and set it to the saved one. We get our distance traveled and set it to the saved one. So when we load it, we'll do it backwards. The last thing we do now is you literally just right here, type in save game to slot, okay? And it'll ask for the object, which means we'll just, we'll, we'll drag it from our variable and plug a bad baby in right there, right chair, right chair, okay? Right chair. Now, the slot name is important, but you have to be very careful because I'm going to set it to one and that's fine. But if we go into the game and play the game now and save it, and we try to load it later when we saved it without any load code, we're, it's going to be a mess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a, a print string here that says saved. 
saved. And again, that's just debugging. So it'll pop up in the left-hand corner. So there we go. We got our save. Create it. Set the variables to save to the new variables. Save game to slot. Pick a slot. We'll say number one. That when we And when we ask to load game from slot, we'll pick number one. Let's just jump in. Okay. Now we're not going to see anything but the word saved pop up there where the numbers are. If I press Z, we'll see every time I press it, saved pops up. Okay. No problemo. Here's the problem. If I go back and load now, if I go back and load here, because we're, watch what happens here. The first thing we do if we want to load a game is type in this. Does save game exist? Now think about that question. So let, 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 it's going to be a branch. And what's cool about it being a branch, by the way, since this is a question, you see this Boolean value, you can drag it and just type in the word if. Boom! Love that. Son. Okay. I like, I, I like that. Let's say this is set to one. Let's set it to one. So the first thing we do if we press X is, does save game exist? Well, if we just started the game, the answer would be no. But where I just coded it in right here, it's stuck in there. It is stuck in there. So it's going to try to load it, but it's, at, it's in a whole different game playthrough. And I didn't quit the game correctly. I just pressed the escape key. It is not going to work. It's going to cause you a mess. I hope that makes sense. We have to change this to maybe two. Okay, we'll just set it slot name two that we have not used yet. It's a whole new slot, okay? Because we already have save one there. We need to start over. We're still doing the coding here. That was just kind of a test to make sure the save game worked. So let's keep going. Does save game exist? Okay, we'll check and see if it does. And if we've played the game, if we've actually played and played and saved it, it will exist, okay? So we'll check that out. Does save game exist? Yes, it does. But what if it doesn't? What do we do? We do nothing. So check out what I'm going to do. I'm going to get another print string, okay? I'm literally just going to tell it to say can't load. Or just say can't load. And that's basically what's happening. We tried to load it, but we can't. But if we can, because two does exist, because we made it, son. Because we made it, because you know how we do. I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. We're going to do the exact opposite of what we did up here. Except the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our save game variable that we've created, right? We created right here. And we're going to type in, oh, well, there's a couple things we're going to do. Type in load game from slot load game from slot do that first do that first drag it in there and since we're working with number two now let's make sure it's a number two you know what i'm talking about and there's a couple things we want to do now very simple very simple here we're going to get the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to get the character location saved so if we get the character location saved but we're going to set it to our character location so see how we did that backwards bro we did that backwards and then of course we need to go right here and type in set actor location and of course you know because we're actually going to set the location of the actor. So take our variable, our location variable, and plug it in there. That's just, that's just us adding a little extra to be a little extra, you know. But the point is, same thing here. Now we need to get, what was the other one called? What was it called? It's called get distance traveled saved, bro. And we're going to set distance traveled. So we're grabbing these saved variables, these saved values, these references. And we're literally setting them back here. Boom. We're doing it backwards. And we're setting those. And then we'll do another one of these. I'll control C, control V here. And instead of it saying saved, we'll say and we'll say loaded. Yes, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Okay? You understand? I hope so. It's a, little, it's a little much going on there, but guys, let's walk you through it. Now, not only do we have the save, but we have the load. So the first thing we'll do is we'll jump in here, and we'll run around. And you see all kind of birds chirping. Hear them. Hear them. See them. Look at them. Touch them. You know what I'm saying? Don't be afraid. Little blue numbers popping up everywhere. If I press X to try to load the game. It'll tell me it can't. It cannot load the game. And that's fair. That's perfect. That's what I want. But let's walk over here to this tree, bro. Let's walk over to this tree. We got about, about 745, 746, something like that. And let's Z. We just saved the game. No big deal. Let's just walk away. Let's walk over here to this other tree, bro, because we're just hanging out. The score's going up because we're traveling like crazy because we're not afraid. But here's the thing. If I press X now, boom. It popped me back here. You see loaded popped up in the left-hand corner. I'm back to the eight, 750 score. You see the score dropped. We're going to try it again. We're way over here. Press it again. Boom, back over here at the tree, loaded. I've lost my score. I'm all the way back at the beginning. So I'm constantly just pressing X and loading the game, and it just keeps rewinding time. So let's try it again. Let's go over here to this pond. Now look at me. Look at me with like 1,200 points, bro. Let's save with that 1,200. Let's walk over here. On top of this little hill, bro, this little grass, just hanging out. We're just walking over here. Now we can see our score is going way up, 16, 1,700. Let's press X to see if it'll load. Snap. It did. It loaded it, and you can see the word loaded popped up there. I'm walking up there, and this time I go over here, and I'm like, Snap! You know what I'm talking about? I mean, just boom. It's, it's freaking sweet is what it is. Okay, so what we're doing is we're saving and loading our game. Now, here's the thing. Let's press escape. Okay, we literally pressed escape. We just escaped the game. I pressed the escape button. We didn't save and quit the game. I just quit it. So now that it's been quit, let's, press, let's play again. Okay, did you see how my score 
It, 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 it completely started over. The game wasn't saved when we quit it. We literally closed the game. That's like deleting the application. You know what I'm saying? Like you didn't, it's like turning your PS4 off while you're in the pause menu. So now if I would press X to try to load, it, w it will. Because we did load it last time we played and now you've got all kind of bugs. So believe me, you can't just press the escape button when you've got a save and low game and expect all that to work. That's not how it works. You actually have to go in here and set up a proper quick game code. So if let's say I type in Q key. I want the Q key. Okay? And I drag a line from that. I'm just going to type in quit, quit game. Okay. Now that's all we've got. That's all I'm going to do. And if I go back, I'll go back right here and I, and I press Alt P. Okay? You're going to see that if I press Q while we're playing, it quit the game. And it's okay. Now, the thing is, that doesn't mean it's okay. That doesn't mean when we quit the game. When you quit the game, you turned it off. You stopped it. No matter what you saved inside of it, it doesn't matter if you didn't save it again when you quit the game. So think about it. What you would actually have to do is if you press Q to quit the game, you would want to run this whole save again if that's what you would like to do. That way, if I stop the game and start it again, we have all of this code. It saved. It saved the location and it saved the distance traveled. But again, that's up to you. However you want to do that, you may not set it up like that. You may only save it when you press the button. If you quit the game and you didn't save it, that's your problem. But there you go. Guys, just a simple code. Like I said, we can resave. It started over. We can resave. We resaved right back there. And if I press the X button, it loaded me back and it keeps rewinding my distance traveled. Not going to just keep sitting here and I can't, I'm not getting anywhere, guys. It's broken. I'm sorry. I love you. I miss you. Josh here with the Proud Productions. Thanks for watching. I know this was a long tutorial blueprinting for. 14, save and load, all kind of cool stuff. But you guys are great, man. I appreciate you. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel, Deprived Productions, for all kinds of videos, music, tutorials, and gaming. Uh, check out Deprived, capital D at the beginning, capital D at the end, at, at the end, on SoundCloud and Bandcamp, and then Deprived Productions on Facebook all day, every day. Okay, just get on there, check us out. We do what we do. We hope you watch us. We hope you learn something. If you have any questions, holler at me. Hope you, hope you learned a little something here, guys. I know I did. <laughs> so uh, have some fun. Have a blast. Create some cool stuff. Hit me up if you got any questions. I'll see you guys soon. I got some cool stuff coming. I love you. I miss you. I want to be on you. But until I can, peace. <laughs>